How do native Australian animals survive in Australia's harsh environment? I'm Christine Cooper from the School of Molecular and Life Sciences and I'm a vertebrate ecophysiologist who studies how animals interact with their environment. There's lots of ways that our fauna has evolved to deal with these environments. So lots of Australian mammals are nocturnal and they shelter in logs and burrows and hollows during the day and they only come out at night when it's cooler to forage. Lots of birds are nomadic in Australia so they move around and they follow areas of good food and water availability. Australian animals are characterised by unique reproductive strategies and so they're able to breed in environments that can be very harsh. So for example, Australian birds are not seasonal breeders. Most of the world's birds breed seasonally, but Australian birds breed whenever conditions are good. So when there's lots of food and water available, that's when they'll breed. Marsupials have a really interesting reproductive strategy where they give birth to really small young that develop in the pouch. And this means that their reproduction is much more flexible. And kangaroos have taken this to the extreme where they go through a process known as embryonic dipause. So females will give birth to their young, they will mate straight afterwards and become pregnant again, but that new embryo will be put on hold during development until the young that's currently in the pouch stops suckling. This means that kangaroos can um, cease reproduction if conditions are very poor, but as soon as conditions are good again, they're ready to start again. Lots of animals avoid um, harsh conditions by using torpor or hibernation. So mountain pygmy possums are an example of an Australian animal that hibernates through the winter in the Australian Alps when there's lots of snow and limited food available. Lots of desert animals also use torpor. So they will drop their body temperature and drop their metabolic rate um, overnight and become active again um, in the evenings when the conditions are more favourable. And by reducing their body temperature and reducing their metabolism, they save lots of energy and lots of water. Frogs are particularly interesting because they live in desert environments, which is really unfavourable for an animal that needs lots of water. But frogs will burrow down into the soil, some will follow the water table and stay in moist soil, and others will form a cocoon. And they can stay in this situation for up to seven years until it rains again and then they'll come to the surface to breed. Torpor and hibernation are also really useful to withstand natural um, events that can be quite catastrophic for species, so things like storms and bushfires. So we did some work with echidnas that demonstrated they use torpor much more frequently after a fire, which enables them to live in an environment that has much less food and much less shelter. Sugar gliders will also use torpor much more during and after a storm um, than when there's lots of food and conditions are more favourable. The harsh Australian environment provides us with a fantastic natural laboratory for studying the adaptations of species to harsh environmental conditions and it may provide us with great opportunities to study the scope for adaptation of species to global climate change.